Hello everyone. Welcome to the first video in the video series of Apache Spark using GCP. In this video, we'll see how to create a GCP account. To create a GCP account, all you need is a Google ID. Open your browser and type in cloud.google.com. In the cloud home page you can select try GCP for free uh, with this option you can create GCP for free for one year and Google provides a credit of $300 with this free account which can be used for trying out Google products in GCP to see what are the products available in GCP you can just scroll down in the home page and you can see under products you can see AI and machine learning, data analytics, compute, storage, databases, migration, network, internet of things which is IoT, media solution, security, Google Maps platform. There are many products available for uh, GCP platform. If we can carefully use and utilize uh, this free GCP uh, account, we can learn Spark and Hadoop in a multi-node cluster for free. To learn Hadoop in a local machine or in a laptop or a desktop, it is not so easy. Those who are exploring opportunities in Hadoop or Spark or who have limited hardware or uh, those who are freshers, uh, freshers from college who, who don't want to spend money on hardware uh, for buying uh, a server or a desktop a high-end desktop or a laptop they can utilize this service provided by Google and uh, spread their wings in the world of spark with no cost for enabling GCP with your account you need to have complete uh, two steps let me click on this try free I have logged in to my Google account and uh, for me to enable GCP I have to complete two steps first step is you have to select your country and acceptance of uh, feedbacks and surveys uh, which I don't want to do it and uh, I have to accept license and agreements of uh, Google you just you can just go through uh, Google platform GCP free uh, trial terms and services and you can select yes and agree and continue as a second step you might have to create a payment profile select your account type as individual and tax information as unregistered individual and you don't have to provide your PAN number uh, or TAN number and you can provide your address details uh, basic address details and I'm just filling it up as India and uh, state and province and other phone number details once you have it uh, you will be asked with a credit card uh, or debit card details you would have doubts in your mind uh, uh, like if I provide my credit or debit card details and what if, if I overuse my account will I be charged with my uh, debit or credit card so you don't have to absolutely worry about those things because Google will not charge you until or unless you manually upgrade your uh, tar from free tar to your payment or business tar so what what happens if you over utilize your resources so you Google will be providing you a $300 credit right so Google will start charging amount from those $300 which has been credited to your account once that credit amount is also expired or it's also become zero at that point all your services and project will be halted it will not uh, provide any further services so to provide uh, further or to utilize your GCP account further then you might have to upgrade your account from free tier to payment tier so you don't have to worry about uh, payments to the Google part so fill in your card details over here and uh, can click on start my free trial once you successfully create your uh, 
GCP account, you'll be seeing something a similar dashboard kind of thing in your GCP uh, home page. You can see here. Uh, I have been provided with total of 20,000 rupees 947 which is approximately 300, $300 at the time when I have created this GCP account and out of which I have uh, left out with this much outstanding amount. So and I have been left out this with uh, 340 days of my free trial. This is how your console panel will look like. In this dashboard you can see a navigation menu over here. Over this navigation menu, you can see all the products which are provided in GCP account. GCP provides a Hadoop cluster which can be used, which can be installed on multi-node. You don't have to worry about installation or installation of Hadoop or Spark or Hive on those clusters. GCP provides a virtual image which you can use and you can install your multi-node cluster ready and up and available within uh, minutes. So. To create multi-node cluster, all you have to do is go to data proc and select on clusters. As I have, uh, you can also pin this so that it will be visible on your, uh, at the top of your menu. Now you can select clusters under data proc. To create clusters in the data proc, you have to create a project first. So let me create a project first. So you can give any project name. Uh, I have to I want to give GCP spark tutorial now this organization I just want to leave it as it is and I'll select create this will create a project now project has been created and you can see that this is the project uh, available for me now you can see here Google Cloud Data Proc lets you provision Apache Hadoop clusters and connect to underlying analytic data stores. For, for us to create this uh, Hadoop clusters, first we have to enable API. So let me quickly enable API. Now API is enabled. To create a cluster, I can click on this create cluster and you can give any name to your cluster i want to give spark cluster it was complaining that name of the cluster should start with small letters so region i can select any of the region and if you select it as a global it, the cluster would be spread across globally so you don't have to do that uh, so I can select any any one region and uh, and in the cluster mode I want to have there are different modes in cluster which is a single node one master and zero workers one master with n number of workers and for high availability three masters and n workers this high high availability cluster is might be required for production uh, environments but for us to demonstrate uh, or to work with spark or to learn spark you can use one master and n nodes and you can select number of cpus and memory for your cluster as a free tier account users we can create only a cluster up to eight cores of uh, cpu processing power i would like to use uh, i would like to have two cpu and 7.5 GB of memory for my master node and uh, my disk I don't want to have 500 GB 50 GB is enough for me and uh, number of nodes for worker nodes also I just want to go with two, two CPUs and 7.5 memory 7.5 GB of memory right so in this I'll have one master and the multiple slaves you can also choose uh, mix and match your uh, CPU and memory and uh, uh, if, if you cross beyond eight cores of memory uh, your GCP will uh, throw an error uh, something like this suppose if I give four nodes five nodes here and you can see there are ten cores of yarn co uh, ten cores of processing power has been allocated so when you try to create a cluster you will get an error stating 
multiple validation errors insufficient cpu's quota requested is 12 available is 8 this uh, request exceeds cpu quota some things so you, you get the picture right when you are creating a free a free tier cluster you are supposed to create uh, a cluster with maximum of 8 cores so for that what i'll do i'll take uh, my master with two cpus and uh, my nodes also with two cpu but instead of five nodes i'll go with four nodes one important thing to remember when you are creating data proc cluster is when you are creating this cluster the amount which is charged for this cluster will be detected from the free 300 dollar credit which you have received from google so you have to keep monitor the amount balance amount in your account and use your cluster effectively only when you are practicing or when you require so currently i will just create a four node cluster that is five node cluster one master and four nodes and i will i can also do this way i'll create four cpus let's see if it allows me as it is allowing me and uh, in the advanced options you can select um, you can select here you can change the data proc version image you want to uh, install with by default, uh, it is selected with 1.2 version uh, and you can also go with spa, uh, image version of 1.3. When you are working with uh, 1.3 version of uh, cloud image, data proc image, you will be provided with Spark 2.3 version. So let me quickly take this 1.3 version of data proc image and select this and run create button. Let me see if I get any errors. And now also I am getting errors here and it states that requested is 12 cores but uh, we have only 8 cores so the problem over here is I have selected 4 CPUs over here so instead let me select 2 CPUs and create this again this time also you can see it is allowing us only 8 cores for an entire cluster including master node so i have four uh, uh, client nodes or worker nodes with two cores each which is eight cores and my master node with two cores right so totally it is leading to 10 cores of memory so instead of having four worker nodes i'll go with three worker nodes and one master node so here i'll have six cores of memory for my worker nodes and two cores of memory for my master node so with this configuration i'll go ahead and create the cluster and as you can see the cluster is getting created and it takes couple of minutes for the cluster to get stabilized so right now you can see the status as provisioning so once the cluster is ready you will be provided with an option that cluster is ready when you are with a free tier account of GCP, one important thing you want to remember is you don't have to keep running your cluster for 24 by 7. It is not required. Whenever you want to practice your Spark jobs or whenever you want to practice Hive or whenever you want to practice any of the Hadoop related commands, you can start your cluster, use your cluster for all your activities and shut down the cluster. This way you can utilize your GCP free account for maximum amount of time without paying a penny and you can learn Hadoop, Spark and Hive in a distributed environment. Now you can see that the status of the cluster has changed to running from provisioning. This means that your cluster is available and you, are re you can use your cluster. Once you click on the cluster name, you can see overview of your cluster for CPU utilization and you can see different options or different metrics for your cluster. And you can also see the jobs which are running on your cluster and you can see what are the VM instances that are there on your cluster and you can also see the configuration of your cluster as well and uh, if you want to connect to any of the cluster all you have to do is go to the node go to the VM instances tab if you want to open a putty session to the cluster it is pretty straightforward by in GCP you just have to select SSH which is beside right beside your spark master node so 
let me click it your browser will open a new session to your Hadoop cluster and using this session you don't have to need any user ID or password for connecting to your cluster VM now you can see here we have got the prompt directly you don't need to provide any username and password as you are connecting through G your GCP account GCP your Google account will take care of your cluster credentials and securely log in log you into the cluster now I have this cluster ready let me quickly show you the versions of Hadoop I have in this machine to check Hadoop version, I can give Hadoop version. You can see it is of version 2.9, and Spark is also installed in this machine as part. Let me quickly check the version as well. And you can see that Spark is of version 2.3.1. Along with Hadoop and Spark, you'll be provided with Hive as well. So you can see Hive version. And you can see it is of version 2.3.2 so this is how you create and connect your to your cluster in GCP which is very straightforward and free of cost for all our developers we can learn coding spark in distributed environment in this video lecture we have seen how to enable GCP in our Google account we have and we have also seen how to create a Hadoop cluster using data proc which is one of the product of GCP in this way we have created a four node cluster with one master and three worker nodes the cluster which you have created using GCP account I would suggest you to delete the cluster instance as soon as you are done with your work every time you want to run any job you can create the cluster build the cluster run the job and once your job is done you can shut down or delete your instance this way you can effectively utilize the GCP account which is that's it for this video lecture guys hope you have found this video useful and informatory if you have liked this video give a thumbs up and please if you are new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel see you in the next video bye guys